just roll with it and see what happens. That's unnecessary because I'm running sound directly. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't need, I, don't need to, I don't need to do that. Uh, hey guys, uh, I'm here this month with my good friend Kyle Odell from Failure Anthem. Okay. They've been on tour with, uh, who have you been on tour with recently? Um, oh gosh, we've gone out with everybody. Like a Storm, Apocalyptica, Adelita's Way, Buck Cherry, All the Remains, We Came as Romans. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can. Let's do, do an outtakes one too. They'll be. They'll be <laughs> funny. <laughs> Touring, I guess, is kind of like a thing, especially for younger musicians that have never done that kind of before. It's like a thing that you have in your mind, like, oh, one day I want to be on tour. I want to be on tour. Um, so maybe give us like, what's your favorite part about tour, and what's your least favorite part about tour? Yeah, don't do it. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing is playing. Um, you know, getting to play every night and getting to meet new people and getting to. You know, go on tour, meet other guitarists, and and do the dumb, nerdy BS that we do. Um, you know, uh, my least favorite thing is I miss my girlfriend, I miss my friends, um, I miss my family. Uh, that that is without a doubt the hardest and worst part about tour is you miss you miss big things, you miss anniversaries, you miss birthdays, you miss holidays. Well, I think a lot of, especially younger guitar players, and I've been there uh, at some point or another. You look at touring like sort of with rose tinted glasses. It's like this yeah. is like, oh, I'm signing a record and I'm going to go do this and everything. But I think people forget that I mean, you are traveling all over the place and you're away from home for really long periods of time. You know, I go through this weird thing, and my manager, well, our manager, always makes fun of it. It's like he'll call me. You know, I'm a producer, so I'm working every single day when I'm home almost, and I'm like on this like schedule. So when I go out on tour. I'm, I disconnect yeah. from everything. So he'll call me and he'll be like, how are you doing? And I'm like, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> I don't know what day it is, I don't know what city I'm in. And he just cracks up because he's like, I can never call you and ask you where you are or anything because you have no clue. And that's kind of one of the things that I hate too is that you just lose all track of everything. So one, one big thing is that you know modern studio recording is almost always double or quad tracked guitars. It's very large guitar sound in the studio. And you're the only guitar player in the band. Yeah. Um, so how what do you do to kind of thicken that up live so that you kind of get that feel of being a double track guitar type sound? Right now I'm doing four four mics, two different cabs, oh, two right. different types of cabs. You know, Use or, a or two twelve or four twelve. Well, I've been shooting lately just two four twelve oh, okay. with like two different kinds of speakers. Right. Just something enough to separate the waveform so they could pan it out. What kind of mics are you using right now? Uh, 57s are my favorite. I have uh, 57s and E609s. I really like those. They do that, yeah. that mid thing. Yeah, my, my goal is the uh, 57-121. Oh, yeah. Combination, the old mutt link, you know. I, I worry about the 120 because we're talking about it's a ribbon mic. Yeah, you, so can, you can blow it. You can blow it up. <laughs> and 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 you know, I set my my amp to stun live, so yeah. so it's it's it, you know maybe I won't do the 121. I don't know. Oh, I mean, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive mic to blow up. So not too long ago, uh, Kyle and I built a rig um, with a G. What's it called? The G system. Yeah. Uh, not GCX. G GCX. Yes, yeah. the ground control in the GCX. And you did that for a while, and then now you've gone to the FX8? X, yeah. The Xpex, or Fractal Audio FX8? Yeah. Not to be confused with the X8. Yeah, which is the same thing, but with amp models in it. It's, 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 a, it's a floorboard version of the X Effects. Right, right. So you're using, uh, I think, two heads right now? Or are you just using one? One's one back right back? now, one right now, and then one's backup. But the, uh, the goal, I think, Depending on how things pan out, is I want to buy an XFX2 yeah. that I'm going to run direct. All and right. then I'm going to have the head with the cab mic. Yeah, and so it'll just blend the two. Give you some, some real. And I want to use the XFX for my ears too, so that'll get some of the bleed. And stuff oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, now you're, you're, you're in ears um, for the whole band, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. everybody's on it. Yeah. Right on, right on. And um, so you're using a 6505 head live right yeah, now? Yeah, that's what I'm using right now, which is weird because. You know, we're a rock band, and uh, that, that amp is notoriously known being used for metal bands, and when I was in metal bands in the past, that's what I used, but it's just like a tried and true head that never fails and always sounds sick, so. 
Are you using the uh, the red channel or do you use the green channel with the crunch? But I always like the green channel this, with the crunch. Yeah, this is this is the disappointing, not disappointing, but same. I, I, the green channel is my favorite channel. I think it has the best distorted side too. I think it's it's awesome, especially when you boost the front with a tube screamer, which I religiously do. Yeah. Um, but because I need a clean channel. I use the red channel. Gotcha. Yeah, I always, I always tended to think that the green channel with the crunch button in and like the gain turned up. If it was, like, if it was foot switchable on this head, and I could use the relays yeah. of Ax8, not Ax8. See, I'm doing it. If Ax8 would switch that, yeah, I would do that. But it's only foot switchable on the plus, right? Which is all MIDI. So then the FX8 wouldn't work. Right, because it's got relay switching on. Yes. Okay, well let's maybe talk about guitars a little bit. So okay. um, what do you what are you playing right now? What do you like as far as um, in the studio and or live or what what are you what are you digging? A Caparison Horus. Maybe be able to see it. It's this cool uh, white white whatever. It's, it's, like, it's like a sponge paint on the it, it, it looks, looks like it looks like like stone or concrete or something. Yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got twenty seven frets and whatnot. But yeah, yeah that's what I never I'm, have too many frets. No, all the frets in the world. But yeah, right. On. And you guys, um, you guys tune to C sharp standard and drop B, which is basically just drop D, but in C sharp standard. If that makes sense. Uh, for the majority of the stuff, yes. But for the new record, I have songs in standard and drop D and freaking all over. Place, so I've got to, I've got to get a few more guitars. Yeah, you gotta have like a stable. Shucks. Album. Yeah. Shucks. Problems. <laughs> Excellent. Part time. <laughs> That's what we need. We need the wings for our outro. Just zooming in on our face too. Whoa. I guess we can end it on a sort of if you had any suggestions or any sort of advice for you know guys that are starting out and want to get you know get into a band or in a band and kind of doing it. You know what what's some some advice you might give them as to to get to where you are, kind of thing. Um, take your time. Oh, I, I, you know that that's like a weird one because I used to say, just just keep at it, and I guess this kind of falls under the same thing. I used to say just keep at it. Um, survive the timeline is a big one because I feel like there's something to be said for outlasting because a lot of bands tend to start and then they just end and it's like if you yeah. can just outlast like a lot of times if you can make it past the first two years yeah they like for some reason that two years is like a big deal yeah. but um patience and take your time because i notice a lot of bands they come in like like as a producer they come in and they want to work with me and they're like deadline 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 blah 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 and if you are not signed you have even more reason to take all the time in the world to make sure it's right, to make sure that you've carved your path correctly, like you've you've figured out what direction you want to do, what market you're trying to hit, what you know, all of that stuff. Because it's really a lot more than just playing. Obviously, focus the most on that, but take your time. Too many guys get ahead of themselves, and they're just they're rushing. They burn themselves out immediately. I have seen that a lot. <laughs> seen yeah, a lot of burnouts. Like a, the band will start, and it's within a year they've already gone through a whole cycle of like built up a really good local following, and then somebody gets mad at somebody else, or like it's not Dude, working. The the I guess it's an, an analogy. God, I'm from the south, it's obvious because I don't know what things the proper way to word things. It's like Lenny from of Mice and Men. I was like, what what was his final fate? because of and I was like it's because you love something so hard yeah and you squeeze it so hard that you kill it yep and I was like you just gotta let it let it breathe and just chill and let it do its thing because otherwise yep yeah, you'll do that yeah. so failure anthem uh, you guys are recording a new record right now yeah and uh, I guess where, where can people go to find out more about failure anthem to listen to your music I mean, obviously, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all at Failure Anthem. Um, the website is FailureAnthem.com. We also have a YouTube page. We even have a Snapchat. Right on. Um, all that stuff. Is your uh, is you guys stuff on Spotify? Yep, Spotify, Spotify Apple Music. Right it's super awesome. It's really, it's really good. Chunky, guttural rock. I like it a lot. You should listen to it. Big dumb rock riffs. Yeah, big dumb rock riffs are the best. <laughs> Whoa! 
Okay, well, I hope this has been informative, and uh, hopefully Kyle and I will hang out again soon and do some stuff. So, um, uh, till next month, we'll catch you later. Thanks again to Kyle for taking the time to talk to me at what time is it? It's like two, almost 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because we do stuff. <laughs> Excellent! Party time! Uh.